Hey there everyone, it's Kathy and welcome back here into my craft room and on my YouTube channel, Kathy's Random Acts of Stampin'. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, you'll see the little icon popping up right here. Um, at the bottom of the video, you can choose to subscribe and if you ring the bell, it will give you options for, um, I'm trying to straighten my camera up so just bear with me a moment. Uh, it'll give you options so you can choose how you want to receive your um, notifications. So I still am not, I still do not have my camera quite the way I need it. So just bear with me. But um, as I was saying, it will allow you to uh, choose how you want to receive your notifications. If you say all, then every time that I go live or put up a video, you should receive a notification letting you know that I have something up or that I'm either live. And I usually try to go live about anywhere from 15, 10 to 15 minutes early. That gives time for people to get in so that we can usually start on time. And if you're wondering what my schedule is, my schedule is um, Tuesday's a recorded video at 12 noon Eastern time. Um, Friday is my live show and that's at 12 noon uh, Eastern time. All my times are Eastern because I'm in North Carolina. Uh, and then on Saturday we have another recorded video that goes up at 12 noon as well. Now every now and then I will throw a video up that's kind of, you know, just uh, something I decided that I wanted to do really quick and I'll just throw it up. So that's why it's important to know or to ring that bell so that you can get notifications. The other videos you pretty much can know that I'm going to go all that way. That's the time that I'm going to go on with either a recorded or a uh, live. But um, when I throw one of those out there that you don't know about, then it's a good thing to be able to get a notification. The other thing is there are times that things happen in my life. I mean, I'm, I'm human. I have family. I have issues. I have doctor's appointments. Uh, you know, I have a husband. I have two dogs. Um, I have grandchildren. So there are times that I may not be able to go at my appointed live time. If that happens, I try my best to notify you via Facebook. So I have a Facebook group called Kathy's Random Acts of Stampin' and the link is below this video and you can click on it and it will take you there. And you can just join. Just make a request to join and you'll be accepted and then you can keep up with everything that's going on here at uh, Random Acts of Stampin'. Okay, with all that being said, Again, I've got my, my beautiful annual, brand new annual catalog, and I know you're going to say when I open to this, you're going to say, oh no, not again. Yes, again, this is on page 91 in our annual catalog. Crafting with You is such a beautiful and so well versed. It's not just the stamps, it's the dies, and you'll see what I'm talking about in today's um uh, card that I'm going to make. I've already made a prototype and I'm glad I did. The, oh, the other thing is my designer series paper that I'm using is the Countryside Inn. That's that beautiful blue and it is stunning. This is a beautiful pack of paper and you can use it with so much more than just that Countryside. Um, where's that one at? Right here. Uh, you can do so much more with this paper than just what this um, uh, bundle offers. Although these uh, nesting dies right here, oh my word, they are, they're called Countryside Corners. They are stupendous because you can cut all these different sizes and anytime you have a die that will let you cut and then a cut again and into it and get all of those different layers and the stamp sets the same way. Once you stamp, this is all one stamp and when you stamp it, you can go back in with your dies and cut out these designs. So a great stamp set to have, but that's not the one we're gonna be working with today. Let me show you my prototype and let me get something to go up underneath that because that glare, I know it bothers me, so it probably bothers you too. There is our card for today. And I thought this was so pretty. I did find this on another demonstrator site, but I changed it up a little bit. I did mine. It's the same layout, but I did some extra layers on mine. And I found a trick that we can use for this uh, hoop. 
it's an embroidery hoop in case you don't do needlework or never have done needlework you might not know what that is but it I've got some little threads here I've got the design that's been uh, put on I even did um, um, a texture on the back of this using an embossing folder so I used the uh, scallop contour dies I put a uh, border inside of this one. Uh, we got lots of layers. We've got lots of little things going on. We got little gems inside our flowers here. I got a rhinestone there. And then inside, I just made a simple statement I just want to hug you. So sometimes when you are sending a handmade hug, what's better than to tell somebody I just want to hug you? So we're going to set that over to the side and I'm going to show you what we're going to need today for this card. So I'm going to lay that piece of cardstock back over here. This is going to be our card base, and this is Misty Moonlight. And this is a um, just a regular size card base. I am going to bring out my um, my scoring, simply scored scoring tool, and I'm going to go ahead and line this up. And we're going to go in at four and a quarter and just give that a nice score all the way down and y'all know I like to turn mine over and butt it up against the side fold it over just like that all right I'm just gonna line that up right there and I'm gonna give it a good burnish just like that now I got a nice uh, even card base all the way around and it is beautiful so we can go ahead and move our scoreboard out of our way Now, like I said, I'm using this um, designer series paper. Look how pretty this one is. That's the other side. This is the side I'm going to use, and I want to make sure I cut my piece so that my flowers are going in the direction that I want them to go. And I think like that's the way I want them to go. So I'm going to cut this piece. Um, I think I'm going to put it in and cut it to four and then cut that down to five and a quarter. <coughs> Please excuse my cough. It is an ongoing thing with me, and um, I've, I've had this ever since I had COVID, and I can't seem to shake it, along with the fatigue and all the other things. But nevertheless, I'm I'm doing okay. I'm I'm still hanging in there. So I'm going to bring this around now. I cut it at four that way, so I'm going to put it to five and a quarter right here. This is going to be our first mat for our card and that's going to live on top of this misty moonlight just like that and you can already see how pretty that's going to be just I mean just already all right the next thing I need to do is I need to cut um, some boho blue and I did not leave out my boho blue let me show you and I know you've seen this before because we've done cards with this before and I got quite a few of the dies out already but um these are our dies, and it is a huge pack of dies, and I've got several of them already out. I have the embroidery hoop. I have the little flowers that we're going to stamp and cut out. I've got the little flower that we're going to stamp and cut out, and I've got the spools that actually give you the spool and the thread, which is really super cute. So you can put any color of... Um, thread on your spool just by die cutting a different color. All right, so I'm going to lay these back over here. We're also going to use our scallop contour dies, and we're going to use our basic number two embossing folder. Now, I numbered mine when I got them in. These are online exclusive. Red dot always means this is an online exclusive. They come three in a pack, and they are, let me grab the other two because they are just so pretty and they now Stampin' Up! did not say that this was one two and three I did this for my own bait my own reference so number one is the starfish number two is that textured one and that's the one that I used and number three is the polka dots so these are 3d embossing folders and they are so much fun i believe they're out of stock but they are due back in on may the 15th which is a week from this coming monday so you might want to be on the lookout for those um, when they come in and grab them because i'm pretty sure they're going to sell back out just as fast as they did 
um, the first time. So I'm just so glad that I got mine when I did. All right, the next thing I want to do is I want to use my largest um, scallop um, contour, not the largest, next to the largest, I'm sorry. This one right here. We're going to cut that one, and we're also going to cut the one that's the next smallest, which is either the third one down or the third one up, however you want to look at it. But um, we're, I'm going to take both of those out, and I am going to cut the both of these out of this, and I think this one will fit here. And we're going to cut this off because I like to be able to cut my paper That will cut that piece, and now we need a smaller piece for this one. So I'm just going to turn it and get me a piece off about like that. And I think right about there will do it. Yep. So that's what I do a lot of times. I don't even measure my when I'm using it for a die cut. I'll just lay my paper down, lay the die on it, and then just kind of slice it where I need it to go. All right, so we've got that piece ready, and we have this piece ready so we can die cut those I wanted to get everything that I need to die cut I need a piece of crumb cake so I'm going to go into my scraps and find my crumb cake and I'm just going to grab a piece out like that I have a piece of gold scrap and I have a piece of white that we're going to cut those pieces out of, and that's going to be our emboss, our, our little uh, embroidery hoop. Now, when you cut it the first time, you're going to cut it out of white so you can get the center that you're going to need for your piece. The next time we cut it, we're going to cut it out of um, crumb cake <laughs> because most of the, I don't know if you've ever embroidered, but most of the, the embroidery hoops are made out of a light type of wood and they're usually this color so we're going to do that color but the little piece that goes across the top here if you notice on mine I made it gold and all I did was took the bare you can see where I did it I just laid it down like that and ran it through my bossing uh, machine and cut out just the top of that and then I trimmed it off and just glued it on top you know I am a stickler for details, so that was the reason why I did that. So I'm going to move all that over. We're going to get our die cut machine out. I'm going to go ahead and use the big one. I hate to bring this one out because it's so big. Uh, let's see if we can zoom out just a little bit. Oops, wrong way. All right, maybe we can do something like that. Let's move everything off of the table so we can actually work and these pieces can go over here and let's go ahead and open up this big boy and see if we can put our plates on so I have my number one plate I have my adapter number two plate I have my cut plate which is the one that's all scratched up and then I have a number three cover plate so both of these are number threes one is dedicated as a cut plate, one is dedicated as a cover plate. So I'm gonna do these pieces first. So I'm gonna just lay this in, and I like to lay them at an angle, just an ever so slight angle as it goes in, because that keeps the stress off of the rollers. I don't know how it does it or why it does it. Can't explain it, I'm not an engineer. I'm a card maker but I know it works so look how easy that goes through no popping no cracking and no bending or swaying of our plates that's the most important thing so I'm going to go ahead and take this piece off and just lay it to the side and then I'm going to take the next piece in and actually no I don't want this so I'm going to lay that down on there and I'm going to put my plate back over that and go ahead and feed it through. And again, going in at that slight angle just makes it go in so nice and even. It's just beautiful. All right, so now that piece is cut. Now we are gonna use this piece, but we're gonna measure, and I've already gotten the measurements for you. You're gonna cut this piece down to two inches by three and a quarter. 
So we're gonna we're gonna cut that down in just a minute. But while we're still die cutting, let me um, let me lay my pieces over here with my card, so I won't lose everything. Y'all know how that is when you got a mess on your desk, and you know I don't care how neat I try to keep my desk when I'm crafting. I always make a mess. I don't know if y'all do. <coughs> All right. This is starting to bow up. You can see when I push down. I don't think you can see it. But when I push down on here, it springs back up. This is what keeps your plates nice and flat. Flip it over. Flip it over and then see it's not it's not springing up now. So we're going to put this on and I'm going to lay this right here. Cover it up with my top plate and cut this through or run it through. Let me get a sip of drink. I don't know, my throat is so scratchy. I may have to go get a cough drop if I keep this up because I don't wanna, I don't wanna irritate y'all with my cough. There's the piece of white that I need. And it's also gonna cut you a hoop as well. And we can just, um, I usually just drop these a few times and it usually pops right out. It's about ready to come out because I can see it lifting. And get a hold of it. I can just well, you know, it's not coming out because I said it would. <laughs> it's okay. We'll just um, we'll use our tool and pop it out here in just a minute. I want to put those back over there, and let's see if I can lift that with my finger. There we go. So there's our hoop, but I don't want it in white. So we're going to run this back through on this piece. And I'm going to put it right up there in that top corner so that I can conserve as much of this as I can. Let's slide the top plate off. Put the top plate on top. And crank it through. Alright, we got that one done. Now this will actually, you can save this because you can always use that on another um, project. But we definitely need our hoop our little hoop out of here. So I'm going to grab my take your pick tool. And the trick that I wanted to show y'all, and this this is why it's always good for me to do a prototype before I bring it to y'all. Um, you learn, and there's our hoop. Now see how much better that looks? It looks like a real embroidery hoop. But we need that little gold uh, screw. That's always the little screw that goes in. So to make it like I said, I'm just going to take this piece of gold and I'm going to lay that right there on the bare edge of it. And I am going to use a post-it flag and I got one right here. Let me get that on my cut plate and then I'm going to I'm going to adhere it down. I just want the ever little bit of that on there. So, I'm going to put it on on like that, put my cover plate over and then crank this through. And there we go. So now we have gotten that little piece cut. And I'm going to poke it out with my take your pick tool. And there it is. And all we have to do to clean that up is just take our paper snips and snip off that little teeny bit. I don't know if you can see it. See that little teeny bit that's hanging over? I'm just, all right. We're going to come in, we're going to hold it ever so gently, and come in and just snip it, just like that. And I'm going to lay that over there because I don't want to lose it. And then I'm going to lay my excess papers out of the way. And I think that's all we can do as far, oh, one other thing. Let's put the number one plate in. I'm taking all my other plates, my adapter. This is your die adapter, whenever you're using your dies, and that's when you need that. But I'm gonna do some embossing. So I'm gonna take that piece of white, and we're gonna put it inside of our um, embossing folder. So it doesn't matter how you put it in. I just throw it in the middle like that, close it up, lay it onto my number one plate, use my number four specialty plate. This is just for using with your uh, 3D embossing folders. And now we're gonna crank that through and get a nice little emboss on that. And now I can put these back over here and get them out of my way. 
and let's do our reveal and look how pretty that is embossed it just gives it texture like it's a piece of linen cloth or something and i loved it i thought it was just absolutely perfect now i want to show you another trick that i found um if you look at this i tried to tape my hoop to my circle using scotch tape on the back it didn't hold and this looks a little wonky it's still a pretty card but I, it did not please me with the way it turned out so i measured my circle my hoop and found out that it is a two inch circle just like that so i'm going to try something and hope that it works i didn't try it earlier but we're going to we're going to try it together and see if it works i want to grab a piece of um thick this feels like thick i'm going to cut a two inch circle out of that oh that was two pieces no wonder it was so hard to cut that's okay I'll have an extra circle for something else when I need it. Now we're going to take this and we're going to glue it on top of this and it will work. See it just barely fits but it does work. Let me zoom y'all in a little bit. But I thought that was just, um, I'm going to do something else to get the glare off of the um, I'm going to bring in my stamping and this right here, this way you've got my host code and my uh, site if you want to go there and do some shopping. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my glue, and you do need something with a fine tip on it. And I'm just going to run some glue all the way around the edges of this. Probably should have put my silicone craft mat down, but oh, 2020. <laughs> and I'm going to lay this right in that glue. just like that and that's going to be on the back so nobody's going to see that now while i'm working it i'm going to go ahead and bring this piece over i believe i will grab a silicone craft sheet for this i don't want to get glue on my on my paper so i'm going to take and put some glue right here just like that if y'all hear noise, my husband's out in the garage putting brakes on our car, so he's always tinkering in the garage doing something like that. But now we have our little gold um, piece up there. And like I said, I'm a stickler for um, details. So now that we have a nice even surface, we can glue this down inside here and not have to worry about that bulk, bu bulking, was it buckling, that's the right word, buckling on us. And uh, I think it will, I think this will just look much prettier. So I'm just going to set that down inside. And I just love, I love anything that I can build and work with like this. It just, it's, to me, it's just very gratifying. So the next thing that I want to do before we start stamping, I'm going to move my dies back over here. And... I've got my embossing folder done, so I don't need that anymore. I'm going to bring over this piece right here because this is going to be the next piece that we're going to need to work with. And this is going to be that piece that's going to go inside of this piece. So, and I told you we're going to cut that down to two by two inches by three and a quarter. So let's go three and a quarter first. So right to there. Every time I cut that, I'm thinking, that just does not look wide enough. But it is. Three and a quarter. <laughs> you know, I have measured this, and I've looked at it again, and I always think, this cannot be right. It doesn't look right. Three and a quarter, and then we're going to turn it and cut it at two. And then that little piece is going to fit right inside of this. And I wanted it small enough so that our stitch lines show on the outside, on the edges around it. And it does. And that's exactly what I was going for. So that worked out good. All the measurements will be in the 
uh, PDF tutorial that will be on my blog. So don't fret if you think you gotta grab these right, you know, right away. You don't. Uh, everything will be there for you. So I'm gonna take some liquid glue and I'm gonna put a little bit of liquid glue on the back of this. I don't want a whole lot, just a little. And then I'm gonna sit this in right inside of this piece, making sure that my stitches are showing. Slide it up. This is why liquid glue is so good for this. And there's our piece in. So let's bring our card back over. We're ready to build the card now, and then we can decorate everything. So uh, all of our decorations is going to live on this piece right here. Oh, we gotta cut one other thing. I almost forgot about our spools. Let's go ahead and put some stamp and seal on the back of this and go ahead and get it adhered. And all I'm gonna do is just run some stamp and seal, three lines of it, top, middle, and bottom or side, middle, and bottom, however you want to look at it. And I'm trying to decide which way I want my flowers to go. And I think like this. I think this looks right. So I'm going to put this down first. And I'm very cautious of my borders. Just like that. Give it a good pat. Then this piece is going to go down. And this piece is going to go um, down flat. You don't want any uh, layers on this either. So I'm just gonna come like this. I love my stamp and seal. I think I'm almost out. Love, love, love that stuff. I wasn't a fan when they first came out with it, but I think they've improved it. So if you tried it early on and didn't like it, give it another try. It is awesome. I like the plus, it's my favorite. So now here's our piece that's gonna go in here, but we're gonna pop that one up because I feel like it needs to be popped up but we're going to decorate. So before we get before we get too far along with this, there's two things I want to do. One is I want to um, I want to go ahead and stamp my flowers. These are the flowers that I chose to use, and I think I know this is going to go against most people's um, um, grain because I am going to use my stamparatus. I could use my little makeshift stamparatus. Remember the one I made. Let's, let's use it because we can. So I'm going to take this one and I don't even think I'm going to use the grid paper. I'm just going to use it flat on this just like that. I need to cut that off a little bit a little bit um, more even. But I'm going to take a piece of white paper and I'm going to grab that piece that I cut out of a while ago. And I'm just going to take my scissors and whack off a piece of it. Doesn't matter. I just want it to be small enough to go through my small die cut machine. So I think that'll work. Now, if you want to, you can use a little bit of tape to hold this down so it doesn't move, which will allow you to stamp it again and keep it in place. Um, that's the good thing about this. This... Um, this tape works really good. So I'm just going to tape it down like that. You could use washi tape or any other kind of tape. Take that off of my um, stamp block. What did I do with my little wipe? I had a little alcohol wipe here. And I'm noticing the back of my stamp feels not quite as tacky as it should. So I'm just going to set that down like that. And I'm going to pick it up with my tool. And what I'm going to do is a little bit um, controversial, I, I guess you could say. I'm going to use a balmy blue. No, I'm going to use the Orchid Oasis. That's about the closest to boho blue, and I, I did not get the Stampin' Rights yet in the um, in color, so I don't have that color yet. So we, we're going to just we're going to use this one. And I also need the green, a garden green. So I think this is my garden green. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to do my leaves first. But we need our brush tip. So we need this tip, and I'm going to hold this up so I can see exactly where my leaves are. And I'm going to come in and color. 
And if you want to know how to make one of these, I have a video on my channel, and I'll try to remember to link it below this video. So if you decide you want to make your own makeshift um, stamping positional tool, you don't have a stamp apparatus. Um, I'm I'm kind of upset with my sweet petunia that makes the misty, so I don't I will not tell anybody to buy a misty. So I'm going to press that down. There's my leaves. So now I'm going to come in with my Orchid Oasis and I'm going to get my flowers. And right here. And right here. Oh, you know, I missed a leaf. Yeah, I think that's a leaf. Yep, that's a leaf. That's a petal. Alright, let's go ahead and click. Oops, what happened here? I got caught up in there. Let's get that down and give it a good press. And we can do that again. Get a little bit more even color on there. And something else you can do too, to wet your ink, huff on it before you stamp it down. And that usually gives you a much better image. And I do have another, let me lift this up and put this back in the back. What I did is I, um, I wanted my covers to be decorated. So I did, I covered some grid paper and put, put in there. So... All right, so now I need the green again because I'm going to go in and color this leaf. And, you know, we're missing one flower, it looks like. Oops, I keep pulling the wrong end off of these. That looks like a flower petal right there. So let's stamp that down, give it a good press. Now, is this the same as having a Stamparatus? No, but it will work. It will give you what you need. And look how cute that is. Yeah, it's not perfect, but you know what? This is going to be what's going to be our needlework on our um, embroidery hook, our broad embroidery hoop. Oh my goodness, I used to do counted car stitch back in the day when I was younger and my eyes were better and I loved it. So I know full well what an embroidery hoop is because I lived with one in my hand. Um, I remember we lived up in the mountains of Virginia when my kids were little and I taught both of my older children how to do cross stitch, the counted cross stitch, because we were snowed in for like two weeks. and. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to go crazy with nothing for the kids to do. And I was cross-stitching at the time. So I taught them how to cross-stitch. I think I've done a little bit of everything from uh, sewing, quilting, um, needlepoint, um, embroidery, cross-stitch, macrame, um, knitting, crocheting. I think I have done just about everything that's out there. Um, I've always been one of those people that I'm intrigued with something until I learn how to do it. And I, it's just always been my nature. All right, we're going to bring up our little stamp and cut and emboss machine. And you know what? One other thing before I go. I am going to take this little one and I'm going to do the same thing with it. And I'm going to... Uh, I keep doing the wrong end. I'm going to do this little teeny flower. And then I'm going to go in real quick with the green because it's just two little tiny leaves right there. And I'm going to give a huff on this and stamp it right there. Not bad. All right, we're going to cut both of these out at the same time. That's what made me think I needed to do that. And then I'm also going to cut my... Um, um, my spools of thread. 
So I'm going to put that down right there and put this down like so. Let's get a little bit of tape. I'm going to use this tape I had a while ago and just adhere that and this. And now we're going to die cut all of this. And there's my little boho blue. I love my little mini machine. I wasn't going to buy the, the boho blue, but when I placed an order, I, I qualified for a 50% um, off item. And I was like, oh my word, do I really want that boho blue machine at 50% off? I could not, I couldn't resist. If you have an order of $500 or more, you can choose any one item for 50% off, which is great. I think it's 500. You know, maybe I better check that because I don't want to tell y'all wrong. Um, it might be 600. 450 to 600. Yeah. If, if your order is $450, you qu automatically qualify. That's $450 of retail merchandise, not shipping, not tax. But um, you will qualify for a 50% off item as well. Get that off of there and get that out. That's beautiful. Oh, there's my little foot. I was wondering where my foot went. I now I know. I noticed earlier that the foot was going on my trimmer and it was making it lopsided. And I knew it would be somewhere and was actually sticking in this. So now I can put that back. Oh, well, I'm still missing one here. That one must have just came out. I'm still missing another one. Okay. Stamping up is really good though, because I lost some feet on my um, my simply scored scoring tool and uh, a scoreboard, and uh, I contacted them and they sent me some extra feet for it. So I just cannot praise uh, Stamping Up enough for their good quality uh, customer service and the way they stand behind their products. So you don't find companies that do that anymore. You know what? I just put that die cut machine up again. And I have got to do this. Um, I'm going to bring my little embroidery hoop over. And we are going to put this down onto our embroidery hoop. Something like that. Now, I know it can look a little bit, you know, kind of wonky. But it's okay. It will work beautifully once we get everything together on this. You want, And we're going to put some gems in the middle of this. It's going to be beautiful. So, let me um, grab some glue. And I am going to just glue this down. I used a little bit more glue than I normally would because I'm, I'm actually adhering it to a textured background. So I want that glue to really get into those nooks and crannies under there and adhere really well for me. So that was the reason for that. Now I'm going to go back to that piece of crumb cake that I had a while ago. Um, what did I do with my crumb cake? Here we go. Now I'm going to take my snips and I'm just going to snip off a little piece right here. Because that's all we need. Just a little piece like that. I'm going to do the same thing with my white. Because that's all we need. And I need some boho blue. Oh, I just cracked a nail. I mean, I cracked that bad boy off good. It's okay. Hey, I won't stop because of a broken nail. I might have to file it just a little bit so it's not driving me crazy. So bear with me. <laughs> you know, it's always when you are doing um, a video that something like this happens. Okay, I got it down enough so it doesn't feel snaggy now, so we're good to go. All right, I'm going to use this one on my thread, on the white. That's the, the thread color itself. And I'm going to put these two spools on the crumb cake. And I want to find a piece of... I had thrown this away, but 
I pulled it back out. That is plenty big for me to get my spool, my, my colored thread off of it. So that's what I'm going to do. Let's move our little hoop over there and our little flower. I don't want to lose it. And I'm going to bring up my embossing machine again. I did leave my plates out, so evidently I knew I was going to need to do this. So <laughs> let's go ahead and put this in, a cut plate in. Let's lay that down. You know what? That one's starting to spring, so I'm going to turn it over as well. I treat both of my plates for my big machine and my little one identical. I don't, I don't, um, I don't treat them different. And I'm going to lay that one right there. And we're going to come back and do the boho blue after we cut these. Now this is why I don't like the grid paper. It slides, whereas if I have it just on my glass mat, nothing slides. It holds perfect. There we go. Took it a minute for it to decide to go through, but it finally did. Okay, here is our two spools of thread, or the spools, and then we can make the thread any color we want just by cutting the thread itself out. So I'm going to lay these right here. You want to make sure you have the smooth side up. And I'm going to put that dot over there. I'm going to do the same thing here. I only need one of these. So I'm going to lay it right here with the spool. I'll throw that one away because they're they're tiny. I won't need another one. Not right now anyway. And then I'm going to take this one and I'm going to lay it so I'm only cutting that piece right there. And I am going to put a piece of tape over that just to make sure it doesn't slide on me. And so we'll put a piece of tape right over top of that like that. Go ahead and scoop my plates on. Bring it back over here. And let's feed it through. Come on, come on. You know what? I'm hating this paper with it sliding. Let's try it this way. Just keep cranking because it will eventually go through. If it don't, then back it out, turn it around, and put it in the other direction. Be surprised. Sometimes you just got to finagle with these a little bit and say, okay, I'm the boss. You're going to do what I say do, whether you like it or not. Come on. All right, don't make me get out the big boy. Oh, that's, there it goes. I saw it when it popped over it and I knew that it was gonna go. It was just taking its own sweet happy time. All right, so now we have this <laughs> after much ado and I'm gonna throw that other side away because I only need the one. And we are gonna bring our spools over. Make sure you got them right side up. There is a right and a wrong side to your spools. And then I'm going to take a white thread and put on one. And a blue thread on the other one. And I'm just going to use some um, liquid glue to adhere those. And I'll show you how I'm going to do that. Let's get our, our silicone craft sheet back over here. I'm going to set that one there. And that one there. And I'm just going to take a little bit of glue and put just a little bit right there. You don't need a whole lot because it will ooze out if you have too much. And I'm going to use my Take Your Pick tool to actually pick up my threads. And I'm going to pick that up and sit it down right where I want it. And then you might have to scoot, oops, got my finger in that glue. You might want to scoot it a little bit to get it exactly where you want it. Like that. And then I'll pick this one up and sit it down. And the same thing, you might want to scrunch it a little bit and get it 
on there just like you want it, but there's our threads. So now those are ready. What else do we need to do? We need to do our sentiment and we need to, um, I think that's it, is our sentiment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece of cardstock and I'm just going to cut a piece off about like this. And on the, the first card that I made, I actually uh, used a, a die from the, um, mm, what are they called? Timeless Arrangement. And I used this one right here. But I think what I'm going to do with this one, I'm going to try using everything out of this. And I'm one, you know, that's not going to work. That's not Maybe it will. You remember the trick I showed y'all on Live Friday? Let's try it with this and see if we can make that work. That would be great. And then we'll have a cute little tag that will fit on the front of our card. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and stamp my sentiment. And I'm going to do the one that says, Sending You a Homemade Hug. I think that's such a cute sentiment. And I think I used that on the first card that I made with this set that y'all fell in love with. Remember the little uh, sidestep? card that I did but I love this one I think it's just so pretty and there's just so many different things you can do with this set I mean I think the possibilities are totally endless and yeah it's it's a pricey bundle I think at $53 but the dies are very extensive so that's why I think it's so worth the money I'm gonna go in and grab my boho blue because I want to do my sentiment in the boho blue Let me move my little spools over here out of the way need to get them where we're going to put them onto our card I'm going to go ahead and ink up my sentiment and then I'm going to stamp it right about here just like that Give me just a minute and I'll be right back. All right, I'm back and what I did is I, I went ahead and put this down and I put it as close over here as I want it. And when I pull, when I run it through my embossing machine, I'm only gonna go about halfway and then I'm gonna stop and back it out. So this is how we're gonna do this. We're gonna open up our little machine. We are going to put this in like so. And I'm going to try to angle that just a tiny little bit. It's really not at a good position to angle, but I need it angled so that... And then I'm going to crank it through about to there and back it up. And now I'm going to take it off. And I'm going to bring it down now to about here. And I'm going to line everything up till I feel it kind of click in. Once I feel that, then I'm going to put my tape back over it, just like that. And then I'm going to turn it this way, and I'm going to run it through and until it's about halfway. So that should be able to resize that die to give us the exact size that we need. So here we go. Oops, let's not go sideways. You know what? Let's just do it on the big one. Sometimes the little machine doesn't always want to cooperate as well as I would like it to. So, for that reason, I'm going to just grab out my big boy, and I, that way I know I can turn it so I'm getting it at an angle. And I'm going to turn this around in this direction. Grab my plates and put it at an angle. Actually, I want it going straight. I'll tell you why. Because I want to make sure that I'm only going about halfway. 
sometimes with a technique like this you do much better by using your full-size machine and there we go and that is perfect exactly the way I wanted it because I wanted to leave room over here to put that little flower that we made which is right here and we're gonna put we're gonna glue him down right about there and that gives you the room over here to be able to do that without um, everything looking kind of weird so that worked for us really well so I'm gonna pull that out and see if I can get these wrinkle these dies up I'm just gonna lay everything over here for now and I think that is all of the die cutting that we need to do I think okay let's go ahead and close this up And let's bring our card back over. Now, if you notice, here is my first card. If you notice, this looks much better than this one. These flowers are different because let me tell you the technique I did with those. I used sponge daubers and I, da I dab the uh, ink directly from my ink pad. I don't particularly like these as good as I do these. So I may go back and redo my flowers and just glue them over top of these. These are pretty, but it doesn't match the card as well because it's a brighter blue. That was that Orchid Oasis. So let, let's redo the flowers. Well, I mean, you know, we can do that. Um, I am going to bring out my Stamparatus for this, and the reason for that is it just works so much better when you can ink and then restamp and ink and restamp. So I'm going to grab a piece of white. And this is just a scrap strip. So I'm going to put it in right about on that line right there. Let's grab my magnets. And I'm going to put one magnet here and one up here. And we're going to stamp right there in the middle. So I'm going to grab my flowers. Um, what did I do with them? Did I leave them on the my little makeshift? I did. They're on my little makeshift um, stamparatus. <laughs> we're going to use the real one. And I'm going to just lay them on here like that and pick it up. And I want to bring a stamp set under here so that I can... Bring it over this way so y'all can see exactly what I do. I'm going to take a sponge dauber. And I'm going to take this one and this one. I'm going to take the boho blue first. I'm going to clean this off and make sure I don't have too much ink on it. Actually, I had plenty of ink to ink it with. And I'm going to go in and just ink that flower. And ink that one. And that one. And maybe that one. And then we're going to stamp those down. The good thing about this, we can come back in and re-ink. I'm not worrying about getting the green, I uh, uh, getting blue where the green's at, because the green will cover it. So we're going to go ahead and close this ink pad up, and let's grab the garden green, and I'm going to dab into it. And then I'm just going to come in and try to get the green just on my leaves. I want the leaves to be a tiny bit darker. So I'm going to put a little bit more ink on them. 
just like that. I like that. I love that. And that's going to lighten as it dries. So we are good to go with that. Let me put these eight dollars back in their little case. And I have just a little case like this that I, I got from like scrapbook.com. And I keep my ink daubers in here just like that and I keep one dedicated to all the different colors so that way whenever I need to do one I um I think they come two boxes like that in a pack great great way to store your daubers and not have to worry about them you know getting ink on anything so um let me get a little bit of cleaner on my cloth my cleaning cloth and we're just going to clean that off really quick and get it cleaned and out of our way. I also keep one of the ink daubers up here on my little uh, carousel so that I can... Oh, the one other thing I need to do, I need to do the little, the little one too. So let's put it right here and pick it up. And I shouldn't have put those away. <laughs> That's okay. There's probably plenty of ink on both of these to, to ink that little bit. So let's try it like this. And like this. Definitely got enough of blue. Not sure about the green. Nope. I'm going to come in with the garden green um, and do this like I did before just to get that ink up in there. Oh yeah, that's better. And I'm even going to come across here with this. And that will dry and dissipate a little bit in just a minute. So let's drop these back in. Get that dye out of my way. And then we are ready to go ahead and cut these. So let's get our magnets back on the bottom. Get my little flower off. Let's wipe that one down too as well since we got our cleaning cloth already with some cleaner on it so that can go there I always wipe my inside of my stamparatus off as well it's just habit and I do hope that many of y'all got a stamparatus before they um, were forced to uh, take them down off of the stamping up website my little card from Saturday. <laughs> I, has, I had it sticking over here and it, it just kind of fell. So that was such a fun card to make. All right, so now we are ready. As soon as I get this ink pad closed, before I do something silly and put my hand in it, let's go ahead and get these die cut. So I'm going to take my scissors and I'm just going to cut here and here and I'm gonna grab my dies again. And it's a good thing I left everything out over here. I got a whole stack of dies, and I'm gonna take these and put them. Oops. <laughs> See so that one goes there. That's the double leaf, and that goes there and there. And we can put this piece of tape right there. And now this one goes on like so. And put that down. Hmm. I would just stick my my little flowers that are kind of wandering around on top of my stamp case because I don't want to take a chance of misplacing those. 
so easy to do. All right, so I'm gonna lay this one here, like so, that over there, and then we're just gonna go ahead and feed this through. And we can peel these off. Oh, that's so, that's so much prettier. I like that much better. It's softer, and we can put it down right over top of that one, and nobody has to know the difference, except you and me, and all the other um, thousand or so people that have, might watch this. <laughs> but it's all right, you know? I look at it like this. Um, we learn as we go, and crafting is not an exact science by no means. It is definitely a trial and error type of deal. So let's go ahead and pull our card back over with all of our pieces. And the first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and build by putting these up like this. And this, oh, let's go ahead and put this one down first. So I'm going to put some glue on it because I want to be able to have room to wiggle. So we're going to wiggle. Oh, and I got a message come in. I don't know if it's my husband. So give me just a minute to check that as soon as I get this glued down. He just left to go to the auto supply store because he needed something for the brakes. No, it was something totally different, so that's okay. I wanted to make sure that I knew what was happening. Okay, that looks so much better. And once we put the gems on it, you're going to really love it. And the same with this. We're going to put this down right there. And I'm just going to put a dot of glue right about there. Might even dab into that because that looked like a lot of glue. And then I'm going to pick this up. I think I'll do my take your picture. Oh, it dropped it where I didn't want it. That's okay. I was able to maneuver it down. And now we got to do the same thing with these. We're going to put a little glue on the back of these. And we're going to sit not there, right here. And right here. Just like that. Now that glue is going to get covered, so we're not going to worry about it. Then we're going to take this, and I think I'm going to pop this up on dimensionals. So let me grab my dimensionals. This one's going to look so much better than the other one because we have it anchored with that two inch uh, circle punch. So if you have a two inch die or a two inch circle punch, it really would be beneficial to use it. So go ahead and pull these off, like so, and then we're ready. And I like to make sure that my hoop top is to the top of my piece. So I'm going to put that right there, and then this is going to go, let's lift this up because I want the edge of that to be up underneath there. Something like that. And we're going to put some glue on the back of the rest of this. So let's pull that back up. Oh, don't tear. And we're going to put glue all over it. And then we're going to lift this back up and slide it under. Just like that. Isn't that cute? And now we can put dimensionals on the back of this because I like the I like it to look like it's sitting up off of the card. And we're gonna put four, one on each corner. And maybe two in the middle. So we'll go here and here. Go ahead and pull these off. I'm gonna use my take your pick tool this time. Just to get those all pulled off, like so, and then 
turn that around and get it centered. Like that, give it a pat. Now what we have left to do is we gotta put some gems on it. So I'm gonna pull out these iridescent, these are flat adhesive back pearls, but they look iridescent uh, the way they catch the light. So I'm gonna grab my take your pick tool and I'm gonna pick off one of these and put it right here in the middle of that flower. And another one for the middle of this flower. And then I think for this little bitty flower, I'm gonna do the same thing I did before. I'm gonna grab the, the basic rhinestone or the rhinestone basic jewels. And I'm gonna grab a sheet of those. And I just wanna grab one of the smallest ones and put that right in the middle of that one. And there is our card, except doing our inside. And for the inside of this one, like I said, I just cut a piece that was four by five and a quarter and glued it in and stamped uh, that. But look, look at the difference in this one and this one. Now, the sentiment's different, the, this, and compared to this one. The flowers, I think I really like them done like this. Um, I think they turned out absolutely beautiful. I love this hoop with the gold on it and that textured background. I think it's gorgeous. So, um, you know, the only thing I changed up on it was the actual sentiment and everything else is pretty much the same, except this flower. I did this in the, the misty moonlight where this one, I did it in the boho blue, but I love it. So off camera, I will put my sentiment in. I'll do the same thing I did here, just a four by uh, five and a quarter and uh, stamp our sentiment in the middle of it with the misty moonlight and we'll call it a done deal. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, tutorial. I hope this is something that you may find that you want to make, and if you do, um, just go over to my site um, and click on the, um, uh, the link where it says, you know, shop here, and it will take you to my online store. You can pick up all of the products you saw me use today at that site. I would love to be your Stamping Up demonstrator if you're not currently working with someone. God bless and keep you. And as I always say in closing, let everything that you do and say bring glory to our Father in Heaven. He is worthy. So until next time, bye-bye.